while there is still no word on a cure for the virus, government officials report the virus is not airborne, but can be transferred through contact with blood. not what I do. It's who I am. I am a missionary. Though the darkness is thick and the valley is deep, lift me up to overcome. The battle is the Lord's. Souls are perishing. For Christ, they need me to bring. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. December 10th, I was looking at the weather reports because there were severe weather threats and possible tornadoes going to be in the area. Right now, I'm standing in St. Jacobs, Illinois, about 20 miles from uh, Belleville, Illinois. I'm at St. Louis Metro East Airport at the airport identifier IL-48. Behind me is AWA's aircraft, 8764 X-ray. I was concerned about the aircraft because you can see out here there's not many hangar opportunities, they're all full. I was really concerned about the tornadoes and the high winds, so um, I was tracking it pretty closely. I saw the weather, I was really concerned about it, really concerned. I was up late tracking the weather movements, but just 10 to 15 miles to the north of us in Edwardsville, heard, I mean, tornadoes hit the Amazon factory. You may have heard about that. We had uh, Joe Birdie is one of our pilots. He's also works with a search and rescue team, and they got deployed with their dogs to that building. So I knew that was happening on Sabbath morning at church. Um, and I was tracking my, our sister uh, rescue company, which is Gideon Rescue Company out of Ardmore, Oklahoma. And we responded to Haiti with them, as well as to Hurricane Ida. And they were gonna send a team of 15 people, four search dog teams, some chainsaw crews, a skid, a skid steer with a grappling hook on it, and some other assets, mainly they're gonna bring also glow tracks, literature, because they knew the devastated area means that there were people would be not physically, only physically in distress, but there would be people that needed to hear the word of God in some fashion. And so I left church as soon as it was over and ran home, uh, got my bag, packed my bags really quickly, headed out for, for uh, Mayfield, Kentucky, and uh, got there about six o'clock, just after sunset. AWA was going to be sending out a, an airplane with two guys in it, Doug and Steven. Uh, we got those towers right there. We'll get out of there. Johnson Regional, Moody 17, Whiskey Juliet departed on the crosswind to the west. Last call, Johnson Regional. chose their neighborhood out of all places because with the federal government playing politics with the category four or category five focus they, on the big cities they weren't only. getting any help they i mean yeah you went into a community that clearly wasn't being serviced by our government or by anybody else for that matter now you had local sheriff's office there and you had a local yeah but they got their resources have to be stretched to the max they, they're, they're, absolutely they were everybody they were sleeping at the jail the jail they're they they were pulling long shifts i mean one of their sheriffs died. passed away in the tornado 
Describe the destruction that you saw. It's indescribable. It, it's it, it truly is. Now you 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 served in the Middle East. It, it was worse destruction than dropping a bomb. I mean, a bomb. At least you're concentrated in the area of the explosion, but. What do you guys think about this? We saw dolls and kids' toys while we were walking around in an area that hasn't been searched very well. Yeah. So we have uh, think. we have two dogs up here searching. I think maybe two more in a different area. It's it, just it's heartbreaking to see this how much suffering is going on right right around us, and we're here to help. And, but uh, seeing all these toys and knowing that under this rubble. Potentially be a kid. Yeah. A child is we're this close to him, but we can't do anything. It's a little disheartening. Yes. Thank you guys. Thanks for what you're doing. But one of our uh, teammates from Gideon Rescue, mm -hmm. he, uh, but he met an individual that was in the candle factory the night of mm. the tornado, and as the storm was coming, he was getting alerts. He was getting alerts and he was freaking out because he has a daughter, a newborn daughter at, at his house. And he's just like, I need to leave. But if he left, you know, he would probably get in trouble with the boss or whatnot. And so he kept going to his manager saying, look, I'm sorry, but I need to leave. And uh, the people were like, no, no, it's you're fine. You're fine. You know, you can't leave. You got to work. He's like, no, no, I'm sorry. I have a newborn. I have to leave. And then he was going around to his friends, telling his friends, hey, let's leave this isn't worth it you know let's leave no i don't know you're fine you're fine you're fine whatever anyways so he left he's the only one that survived the only one that survived and so yeah so matt you know and so we were we were talking about that during worship while we were at the um at the church and we were thinking man one of the biggest things is never skip a person never skip a house because if we have not gone down to that corner house where this the guy at that house the veteran you know that we have we've been circling he wasn't outside of his house he wasn't asking for help we went to him we could have skipped him but we didn't you know the there were times where i was literally looking at the heritage kids and there were vehicles driving by and that like there was that like split second hesitation of should i go should i not and then they would just like make up the decision and run after the vehicle, catch them, stop them. People would roll down their window. Can I pray with you? And here's a glow track. Those kids are courageous. You know? And Very so courageous. <laughs> there was, it's just not skipping an, an individual. And we were thinking, you know, if this was in a spiritual sense, we are living in the tornado's not over in a spiritual sense. We're living in a day and age in a world where this tornado is raging and moving around and some people just don't know it, you know, and we know it's coming. So what are we going to do? Are we just going to sit there and leave or are we going to run around and tell all our friends and all the people that we know, hey, we got to go, we got to go. And so that was, yeah, we, <laughs> we choked up. I mean, <laughs> Doug and I just off, just flying on the way back, we just... We broke down crying a couple of times because it was just it's the flight is surreal yeah everything is just the, the moments the news is not doing it justice i mean they're, it's not capturing like and just these people you know uh they pulled up to this truck and they're like hey are you guys giving supplies out and uh we were like yeah we are and they just broke down crying right in front of us and we prayed with them and man that just touched my heart i'm <laughs> i'm really emotional right now i'm trying to hold it back but i'm so happy i'm with having this world aviation i have not made a difference like this in years I'm touching lives get to pray with people give them literature touch them in their like their spiritual need Feel their spiritual need as well as, as well as their physical. And that's what we're all about. And it's filling my heart. It's ministering to me just as much as I'm ministering to them. So yeah. <clears throat> and so 
Brock, uh, Corey, uh, and Wills, and uh, Doug, all of us, we said, no, you know what? We need to get together and pray, refocus, and find find the next place. And so we prayed, you know, I was able to pray, and uh, it was like, Lord, please help us find that next big need, because we, we, need we need to make as have as much influence in this area as much as possible to spread the word and spread the gospel and also the Help literature. People, yeah. yeah. And so we prayed and uh, that's when news arrived that there was a lot of help um, towards a lot closer to the lake. So further down the road um, that was needed, that was needed. Yeah. <laughs> All of us are going in that direction now. And so we get to the top of this hill, basically where the end of the road is. And uh, we're looking around, and there's just disaster everywhere. Can't, and so, they can't leave their houses, their dry, trees everywhere. They can't. They couldn't get out. Yeah. No. So Brock and Michael, I believe, um, and a couple of them, they were going kind of door to door to see how they could fill needs, you know. And I was working with the heritage kids. I was. I told the heritage kids, like, "Hey guys, let's remove all this rubble from the front of this house and help these people out." So we moved in there, you know. And I mean, within minutes, we were getting rubble out, and the guys who owned the house, they were just like dumbfounded, just staring at us like, what? Who are you guys? Um, I found an American flag just laying there on the floor. And uh, wow. and immediately, I, you know, I, 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 I ran to go get it. And then these two girls from Heritage beat me to it. And they grabbed the flag and they didn't know how to fold it, but they were trying, I think this is how you fold it, you know? <laughs> and uh, Doug showed up and I, you know, I was there with my phone recording it as they try to, and then we folded the flag up, you know, and I was able to give that flag back to the owner of the house and he just broke down crying. He's like, thank you so much, you know? And uh, meanwhile, yeah, meanwhile, um, they were, they were, Michael was like, hey man, they need you. Cause I, I had stepped mm -hmm. away and to go get Michael on the, the, the Ranger and they were, Michael came and he's like, hey man, can, we need you. There's, there's a drunk, veteran not special. not yet not yet oh okay, so yeah. so basically as they were going door to door brock so while this is happening with me over here in the flag and everything brock is going door to door and someone says hey you should check out that one house there's a really old lady out there um see if she's okay so they head down to that house and uh no one's home so you know i guess she wasn't at the tornado or the site or anything so she's fine but then they look and they see this one house driveway is completely blocked off by these by six foot giant, round trees six foot round trees on the on a, a probably a seven to ten degree incline incline just down and there no you know move those, yeah. nothing and there's a truck down there obviously it can't get up and there's smoke coming out of the chimney of this house but you know we they didn't see anybody but they decided you know let's go down there and, and check it out and so they go they knock on the door and this this vet comes out and uh you know drunk. drunk completely drunk just looks like he's given up on life completely yeah. uh later on we find out that he actually had a uh, a rope hanging like because he was going to end his life and uh so here so he, this happens yeah. brock comes and gets me and says hey man we have a job that needs to get done um we need to clear this driveway this guy didn't want uh, our help but we convinced him hey let us help you. Let us at least clear the driveway so you can get out. And so the guy said, okay. So I grab a chainsaw, a couple of us grab chainsaws and we get down there and we start working on cutting up all those trees um, while the skitzer is on its way. Um, and then that's when yeah. Doug got called and Mike and Doug started they called working. called me, and, well, they called Mike and they said, hey, can you get Doug up here? Because this is, this is, he was a special forces in the army. He, um, he was drunk and he started talking he's like there's no or there's look at this and he's like this is just he's like take him back alcohol didn't help him he had some some medical issues from his time in the military and he was just pounding them back he's just, he just started i just let him talk and as he's talking he's you know obviously he's very upset and i was trying to get him away from the alcohol and keep him away from the alcohol and he had the music blaring he's just telling he's like this is just no 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 reason to live anymore and he's like everything's gone you know every everything around us his house was damaged and he had a lot of damage to it but it was still standing and i said listen brother and i said you're lucky 
I said, God was, had his hand on you, and I said, you're here for a reason. So he started telling me about his girlfriend who put herself, threw herself over six kids and saved them because everything had came down on them um, in Mayfield. So as I'm listening to him, he starts, you know, he's getting choked up. He's really mad, and, he's, and then he starts. Did he, going, did he lose his girlfriend? Did she don't no, know? she. They, they survived. But, you know, he, was, he was telling me he said, she deserves an award because of what she did, and like those, those kids are only here because of her. And um, and then he goes into some personal stuff. I didn't want to, you know, t I was trying to steer him away from because he kept on getting angrier, and angrier, and angrier, and I'm like the alcohol wasn't helping. So, but he was throwing. Uh, he was throwing a lot of GDs around, and it was making me feel a little bit uncomfortable. I'm like, okay, so I, was, you know, I sat down next to him. I asked him to sit down with me, and we sat down, and I just kind of, while he was talking, I was praying. I was like, I mean, Father, I, I, don't, I, I don't know how to handle this situation right now. I said, I, I know I've been in his shoes, and uh, so just give me, give me the strength to kind of, I don't know, just figure out a way to help him. In the meantime, our entire team saw what was going on and we stopped to pray and we all circled up and were praying specifically for Doug wow. and this conversation. So Mike comes down and I had him I eventually got him calmed down. And it wasn't Mike. No, nothing. We just he just started refocusing. He went and grabbed another beer and I'm like, oh. so I was trying to he started hashing out the same things he talked to me about, and I just told Mike, I said divert his attention you know so I saw he made a really nice uh, outdoor um, uh, end table I was like man you that's really good I said have you considered making more of those and kind of making a business out of that and selling them I said people would buy that and that kind of as I was doing that everybody came down and they started singing yeah we uh, we finally been able to clear out the entire driveway you know, and uh, once that was all clear, all, it was starting to get a little later, you know, the sun was starting to get down, and all the Heritage kids, myself, all the Brock, uh, Brock and the, all of the uh, Gideon rescue crew and all that, we kind of all just kind of came down to that area, and we circled him, and so I, saw, I ended up yeah. telling him, he's like, you know, nobody's coming, nobody's coming out here to help us, you know, nobody. And I said, listen, sir, I said, I told him who we were, and I said, let me tell you, let me show you something. So I showed him the video of us circling around, it, it, his house is in that video. Oh, wow. The, yeah, when we were flying, really? it was his house it we were circling. House. And when all three of us, me and we were like, well, that's you didn't where know we you, need that to was go. your turn around the point? No. Wow. We, took, we did a turnaround a point over, over his, his house. house. That's what I mean. That was the turnaround yes. a point. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it was in the video that he. Yes. That, that the video that I put on Instagram, oh, wow. that video, his house was on it. All three of us were like, we that's need where we to need go to go. Here. And that's where we all ended. Yeah. And so. It, it How do you crazy. find that needle in the haystack after going in the air and then getting back on the ground again? That's amazing. Well, yeah, ex exactly. So With all that rubble and destruction. Uh, I showed him the video. He's like, that was you? And I was like, that was us. I said, we knew you guys needed help. We saw that you guys needed help. We're here to help you. I said, he said, I just want to help people. And I said, brother, there's a time to help, and then there's time to be helped. Help, yeah. I said, right now, it's your time for us to help you. Wow. And we thanked him. We kept we, thanking him for his service. We kept thanking, and then... Everybody from Heritage came down, and I, I didn't even know. I, I kind of these guard. kids are singing. No, yeah, we we all got around them. He started and literally just started singing. He started recording. He started, started recording us singing, and we're just we did like two or three songs for him. I re, I looked. He looked at me, and I said, you know, I I understand that you have some you know, reservations about God. I said, but I want you to know this is God working right now. He said, I see it now. I mean, this guy is like was literally on the verge of taking his life. He wanted to burn his ha the rest of his house down. He had the rope ready. And all the while, there's this other random guy who decided to join our team um, and Gideon Rescue and everything. Daniel. What's his? Daniel. Daniel. This random guy shows up out of nowhere, wants to join, he sees that we're making a difference and decides that he's gonna join us. So he's helping clear the entire uh, driveway while all of this is happening, okay? Isn't Chris, it, well, well been, we don't know, he's, but... He's been, he'd been questioning his faith and he 
he uh, later when they walked away, me and um, who was it that we were praying like Wills, Wills, uh, the guy that owns Stubby. Yes, okay, Wills. Wills. So me and Wills were sitting there talking, and Wills was like, "You did a really good job." And I said, "I appreciate it." Well, Damien walked up to us, and he was he started talking. He was like, "You guys are increasing hope and faith." And then he started crying. He's like, "I try not to choke up." He's like, "But I, I'm, I'm having a hard time with this myself and my walk with, you know, with God." And so we just, we just yeah, sat he there. He saw the singing. Yeah, we and every, sat there and like, prayed with them, and um, yeah, it's, so it's pretty good. It, I mean, you could tell, I mean, it, his mind, the way he was, he was looking at everything, looking at us, I mean, I sat there and watched him. I didn't know who he was. I hadn't seen him yet, and I, while we were, they were singing down there, I sat, he was, he, he took out his phone, and real discreetly. Right, back to the lot trying to record this. He just, he was just recording, and uh yeah, I mean, he was touched. He was touched, and uh, by that time we all packed up. And by that, yeah, we started when we were done there. We started packing up, and we got ready to go, and and and, and so we left. And then uh, that testimony that I told you about this morning happened with uh, um, at the gas station. Yeah. Uh, for getting the receipt and tell tell me that story again. So how did that so, how did that all happen? I mean, you know, because so I had filled up the box truck. To, uh, you know, I pay, it was like $70, you know, and in order for me to get reimbursed, though, I need the receipt. And I had forgotten the receipt. And uh, so I went that, I, you know, after the whole day was over, I went that night to, uh, to see if I could get the receipt, but the gas station was closed. So I was like, okay, whatever, I'll go in the morning. So right before we uh, were about to leave to the airport, um, I was like, hey, can we swing by the uh, gas station again? So we swing by the gas station and I go in and talk to the lady in the front. She's like, yeah, you know, this is going to be rough. Go talk to the manager. So I was like, okay. So I go and talk to the manager. Oh, so it was the manager. Oh, yes. The she man was the one that was upset. Yes. And so I walk in and I see that she's like, like she's been crying. And I'm like, you know, and you know, I, I kind of tell her why I'm there and everything. She's just like, well, right now I have an issue with the thing and I, I'm not sure if I can get you the receipt. You know, and then I, I just stop and I'm like, hey, you seem like you're really stressed out. Are you okay? You know, and, and she's just like, oh, I just, my neighbor, his house is gone. And, and basically she was just getting that survivor's guilt. She, um, her neighbor didn't make it. Her neighbor didn't make it. Oh, wow. You know, and so she's wondering why me, why did I survive and why not my neighbor? Um, and I was like, I was like, you know, I believe that, you know, I came here for a receipt but I believe that God actually sent me here to pray for you. Um, I said, I was like, look, um, God doesn't care about, I mean, he cares about this world, but it's not just about this world. It's about eternity. And, uh, and God, you know, all the people who passed away, God has done everything in his power for them. You can trust that, but he's giving you more time because he's trying to reach your heart. And, uh, and she was just like, she broke down in tears. I was able to pray for her. I was able to give her a glow track. Um, the only glow track I had in my pocket, I didn't even know. It was kind of like a, um, like, shoot, I wish I had a glow track. And then, oh, hey, I have a glow track. <laughs> and so I gave her this glow track and she's just like, you know, she's, she's like, you know, let me get your information. If I get this receipt, I'll get it to you. And, uh, and just now as I landed the, uh, uh, as we landed the aircraft, I got this email from her. And it says, I got your receipt for you for your fuel purchase. It was very nice to have met you. The ministry that you are a part of sounds like a blessing. It's so refreshing to hear of the goodness and mercy you share with people. I am sure you have seen a lot of things doing what you do. I pray that you stay safe and keep up the wonderful work that you do. What a way to show God's love and mercy for each one of us through your ministry. Yes. Everything in the life is temporary and God and God life is eternal. I needed to feel God's love and be reminded. So thank you. I feel so blessed to have met you. It breaks your heart to see the devastation there. The sadness of people's lives completely destroyed of their worldly possessions, uh, their homes, their lives uprooted. It's horrific. 
but there is hope. And uh, God sends people from all different kinds of backgrounds and walks of life. He sends them there to help their neighbor. That's only motivated by the Holy Spirit, I believe. And uh, Gating Rescue Company, Adventist World Aviation, we, we collaborated together to make this possible. We did that because the Holy Spirit's leading us. And we want to make a difference in people's lives, not just physically, but spiritually too. But I tell you what, one month from now, most of us won't remember Mayfield, Kentucky, or remember Dawson Springs, or remember the other communities like Jonesboro, Arkansas, other ones that were hit by the, by the tornadoes. So I ask you to think about how you can be a part of that. Keep that always in your prayer. For the next three months, it's gonna take six months or a year to recover from this. They're gonna need a massive amount of help. Prayers are paramount, prayers are paramount. Adventist World Aviation is, is gonna go back and continue to help people there. So you can support us financially, you can support us physically with supplies. We wanna stage supplies so it comes back in when they start running out of stuff right now. When they start running out of hope, start running out of people to help them recover. So in January and February and March, you're gonna need more stuff. So you wanna help, pray. Ask God to open the doors where you can help. Consider helping through Adventist World Aviation because we're here to serve people however we can. We want to be the hands and feet of Jesus, however he's leading. Thank you for your time. Please pray for the victims of these tornadoes, people who've lost their lives. Pray that Jesus will enter their hearts and they will know how to help their neighbors and friends too. Thank you for your time. If you could ask the American population one, quest, or one request, what would it be? Take care of your neighbors. Love your neighbors. Check on your neighbors. Love your neighbors. Respect them, respect everything, and just be grateful for what you do have, and who you have, and who you have with you. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer some of these questions, and uh, we really appreciate it. If there's anything that we can possibly do to help you guys further, please for humanity, please don't hesitate to give us a call. It has been an awesome, been honor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.